there's no way you could excuse this as just him not understanding that he can't touch students. Like, and he had made comments to the entire class, like about his penis size and. What the fuck? Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Santagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that wants to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can send us an email at oplpodcast at gmail.com or go to our website, oplshow.com. Yeah, and if you guys want weekly bonus episodes throughout the season, you can head over to patreon.com slash oplshow. So you'll get a behind-the-scenes look at us kind of preparing for the upcoming call so you'll know what topic that we're going to discuss. And it's just $5 a month, and it helps support the show. So head over to patreon.com slash oplshow. So... Today, we're covering an important and scary topic. We'll be speaking to a woman who was abused and molested by one of her high school teachers, and we'll be talking to her about how she handled that situation, how she may have handled it a little bit differently in retrospect, uh, and how she basically moved forward you know, from those dark times. And I think just as a preface to say this up front instead of at the end, you know, we do think that these episodes are important. Sometimes they're hard to listen to, but while so many of us, I think, are programmed for, you know, what could be called stranger danger or this fear of random people harming us, it's actually so often those that are closest to us, whether it be family, teachers, parents, uh, that end up inflicting either psychological or physical damage. And we feel it's just an important reminder. So we appreciate the guests who uh, have gone through such trauma and who are willing to share those stories, insights, and sort of red flags with us. So... With all that said, we've got our guests on the line, and thanks for being on today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Um, I really like that you mentioned the stranger danger thing, because I think that's what kept us from talking about it at the Mm. time. Yeah, no, totally. And, you know, we're definitely uh, eager to to get into all that, because I think it's going to be super helpful, you know, for a, a lot of people listening. So to kick this off can you just tell us a little bit about you know this this teacher and i guess your initial relationship with him uh prior to anything inappropriate happening yeah so um this was my freshman year of high school um so i really hadn't known of the teacher besides the fact that he was the football coach and um what the first day of his class he had yelled at my friend and I for talking I guess like we were just kind of like talking and um so like initially we just thought like he was stressed it was a class full of freshmen (laughs) so um it kind of just continued that way like he our class was all girls and two guys and he definitely did not like the girls he would yell at us and say like oh like quit talking you guys like all you do is talk like it was a gym class so he he would like make you run and um like i'm sure we were probably being a little disrespectful but um yeah so it was just before that he was just kind of that like hard gym teacher that you have that like takes it really seriously Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's so funny I, I i'm picturing a gym teacher in my high school that sounds exactly the same I, I feel like that's a i don't know it's like a stereotype in a way but i feel like that teacher does exist a lot of places yeah yeah he definitely like the one that cares a little too much about like kickball <laughs> so did you did you always have just some sort of you know feeling in the back of your mind that this guy <clears throat> was he just like a strict kind of teacher or did you have it in the back of your mind of like he's kind of like not all like a good person um I don't know I really I don't think I got any like bad vibes I was also 14 so I didn't have much life experience up until that point but I kind of just saw him as like a strict teacher especially since he was the football coach like he was very like in the school like took sports seriously yeah I think um you know, before we move forward too, like just just when you said I was 14, it, it just hit me. Wow, that's really how young freshmen in high school are. So 
Um, yeah, we'll continue, but I think just like an important reminder for listeners too, as we kind of go through the story and we kind of learn about what happened to you, the actions that you took, you know, you, this isn't you now, this was you at 14 and that is insanely young. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I have a nephew who's like just turned 16 and I still think like, um, that's crazy. Like how young he is and like. I don't know. I think they need to cut some kids some slack because I didn't cut myself slack. Hmm. Um, so, can, so can you kind of, uh, you know, kind of go into, you know, you had this gym teacher, strict guy. When did he start, you know, um, I guess kind of coming off a little creepy? So he would start to like rub our arms and our lower back, like, in conversation if he was like hey you're doing this wrong or um like all right go to the locker rooms it's time to get changed anytime he would come up to you to talk to you he would like rub your arms and your like lower back and that immediately felt off to me because teachers aren't allowed to touch kids at all um the one teacher I had in like eighth grade, I wanted to give her a hug because I really liked her. And she was like, we can't hug any, like we can't touch students. So um, that kind of like weirded me out, but I thought it was just because he's older and maybe like old fashioned. Yeah, that's super creepy. Yeah, yeah, just that alone is like- I I can't think of even a situation like in my own life that I would like rub someone's arm like while talking to them yeah it's like that's something you say for like flirting with someone i feel like right right um but yeah it just kind of started to progress from that since like nobody really spoke up and was like hey don't touch me um so he his whole like any time he would touch us it was because he wanted to demonstrate that we were doing something wrong and try to show us how to do it right. And Mm -hmm. the one day we were doing bicycles, like on the floor, you have your legs up in the air. And um, he came over to my friend and I, and he was like, you guys are doing this wrong. And he was kind of yelling, um, like he was just a yeller. And he was like, let me show you how to do it. And grabbed my upper thigh, like where the inside of your thigh would meet like your pubic bone okay and grabbed that and lifted my leg up and started like lifting it up and pulling it down to like do the bicycle movement and like i was so shocked and my friend looked over at me and we just stared at each other like what the like (laughs) what the fuck is happening um and um he went over and kind of did the same thing to her and was like now do you guys get it you know how to do it and we were like yeah yeah (laughs) so um it started to turn into stuff like that where he would grab um mostly that area like um and again it was always the excuse was that we were doing something wrong and he was just demonstrating how to show it to us but he was always grabbing like it it was through clothes but you, he was still grabbing us and um sometimes he would brush against like our chest um and that kind of is where we started to think like he's just a pervert so there was a, a group of you and your friends that you guys kind of got together and would have these conversations about like this seems weird right and they'd all you'd all kind of be in agreement yeah so he was as far as I know from talking to other girls in my class, um, my one friend and I were the only two girls in that class that he was touching. And um, like he was doing it out in the open. Two of my friends had seen stuff happen and we'd go into the locker room and be like, did you see this? Like, like is th- we were like trying to get, our concerns validated like this is weird right like that's not normal and they were like i really think you should report him and um we kind of just kept pushing it like excusing it as like he's just a creepy old gym teacher like it's not 
malicious. He just doesn't know how to interact with kids. Yeah, it's scary to hear because it's not even the most just kind of like outrageous. Like you read some stories, whether it be a teacher or anyone, where it's just like, well, well, this guy just lost in started flashing all his students or had sex with a student or asked a student to have sex and but this like subtle mind fucking for lack of a better word where it almost has this built-in excuse for him of you know no i'm a gym teacher i have to show them how to you know do the right things and it's you know it's not like evidence like a text message or email or something like that and it's just scary to hear that because of the subtlety i think of someone abusing their power their status their role to you know children underage children who he i'm sure very well knew wouldn't maybe necessarily know how to interpret this or you know what what to do with it and it seems like if it became so consistent that he got i guess really comfortable and and confident that nothing would come of it either yeah um it i was told by the detectives later on that he was intentionally grooming us and um like he had premeditated and from him yelling at us from the first day it really feels like he picked us out from the start Mm. um we we were 14 but we looked like we had just hit puberty um we were tiny like we looked like we could pass for 11 or 12 at that time um so I'm not sure if, like, he, I kind, I think he picked us out and subtly tried to change things and make things worse so slowly that we wouldn't really notice until it was too late. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. Terrifying. You, you, you mentioned uh, detectives and whatnot. So when, when did you guys kind of make the decision of, like, we're going to report this? So that was um, years later. Um she had opened up a police report um like years after this happened oh so what did you got is there anything that you guys did immediately i guess before the detectives or the police report yeah so it got like he got worse with touching us um and he was worse with her too like more just like there's no way you could excuse this is just him not understanding that he can't touch students like um he had bent her over and grinded against her um and he had made comments to the entire class like about his penis size and um yeah it and he had told one of the boys in our class like he was like do you see all these pretty little girls running around here like you have to get um strong so they will want to date you and like like just like making comments about the girls in our class um but it had gotten to a point where like he had a noticeable erection like you could see it anytime he would touch us which is what had led me my friend to say like he's a like pedophile like he's not accidentally doing this stuff um but we were too scared to speak out. Um, My female gym teacher who would sit in the locker rooms with us overheard us talking about him and calling him like, we were like, Oh my God, he's such a little pussy. Like he, we hate him. He sucks. He's ugly. Like just like being jerks about him because we didn't like him. And um, we were like, he's like a pedophile. Like, and my, female gym teacher came out and was like i don't ever want to hear you talking about my co worker like that mm. and so we were like terrified to speak out because we thought like nobody was going to listen if this woman heard us saying he's a creep like and she wouldn't do anything our male principal was not going to do anything um so it took us until two weeks before the end of the school year to say anything Okay, so what, uh, you know, totally understand that. Again, like like we said in the beginning, as a a 14-year-old and then having that interaction with the female gym teacher and I'm assuming, you know, just feeling like 
if we do say something, are they even going to take this seriously? So what led you, you said, I guess, two weeks before the end of the year, um, what, what ultimately led you to speak out and who did you go to? Um, so we had talked to, I talked to my mom and she talked to her parents and we were like, Hey, like our gym teacher creeps us out. We didn't really get into details of it cause it was embarrassing to talk about to your parents. Um, but we were like, he really like is disturbing and her mom and my mom talked and they were like, we'll go up to the school if they want to come and talk about it to the principal, like we'll be there. So they have an adult with them. And, um, so we had already planned on saying something, um, when one of our moms could get off work. And then the one day we had gotten in like a screaming match with our gym teacher. Um, he pulled us out of the class and was like freaking out saying like, you guys disrespect me constantly this whole year. You've been so disrespectful. And I like, I don't understand it. I don't know what I could have done for you guys to just blatantly disrespect me. Cause at this point we had just stopped. We pretended like he wasn't there. Like if he told us to do something, we just would ignore him. Mm -hmm. Um, cause we were just so, like done with him and um my I didn't say anything my friend was a lot more bold um and she was she pretty much said like I'm not going to respect you because you don't respect us and you've treated us like garbage for this entire school year like we've faked sick to get out of school we've like we were really good students, like 4.0 GPA, like good students. And we had really considered just like skipping school altogether. Um, and just like sitting in the parking lot, like we did not want to go to school anymore. And when she said that his tone had like completely changed and he was like, what do you mean, hun? Like, of course I respect you. Um, and he kept calling us hun and it really, we were like, he's, just disgusting um so the next day we reported him to the principal and the assistant principal what did uh what did you guys like kind of say to them and, and what was their reaction um so at first her mom did most of the talking she kind of just said like these kids have come to me with some really um like really bad things about a teacher and I think you guys need to listen to them and make a report and so we told them everything that had happened um in chronological order we gave down like four of the girls in our gym class like our their names um because we were like they've seen it too like they've seen stuff and um you know wrote down how like he would rest his hand in our lap and just like like in between our thighs if we were sitting down like he like just put everything down and um at the time our principal was like that is really concerning of course we don't want you to go through that um so for the last two weeks of school we didn't have to go to the gym like the gym class we sat in the office um and they told us we were going to be writing a police report. Um, so we made what we thought was a police statement and later found out that it was just a school incident report. They lied to you that it was an actual police report? Yeah, they had a school resource officer in the room with us. And they said, like, we're going to write out this police report. And um, he wasn't a police officer. Um, he was like a school resource officer. Mm. Um, and it was just like an incident report. They told us like the police would investigate and the school would do their own private investigation too. Yeah, especially since you gave names, you know, of other students and people that could share those stories. But did an investigation never happen? Um, no. And they they asked us what we wanted to see and we just said like at this point like we don't want him to be a teacher but if that can't happen we don't ever want to see him again like we just don't want to have him as a teacher and they promised us we wouldn't 
And I didn't get scheduled with him the next year, but my friend did. Wow. And she, her mom pulled her out of school and just homeschooled her. Um, it affected my friend a lot worse than me because he was a lot worse to her. Um, so, um, anytime he would come up like to my friends and like yell at them, if we were like walking somewhere we weren't supposed to during like lunch or something and he'd go to like say like hey go get back to the cafeteria and if he saw me he would just walk the other way yeah um so three-ish years later it was either the end of my junior year or the beginning of my senior year i had detectives come to my door not knowing anything was gonna happen and they asked me to talk about my teacher and i thought it was because the school finally was doing something um so i told them everything again i gave them um names and phone numbers and they did go to my friend's house and friends houses and invest, like ask them questions and stuff um but it turned out my friend had opened a case with the police um, privately. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. And she wanted, she, it was like a couple years later, I think she just thought on it and wanted like something to come of it. Yeah. Was there any sort of repercussions for him? No. So, I mean, kind of. So the detectives, I told them like, about the police report that we'd filled out because I still thought it was a police statement or whatever like at that time and our school was new it was a new building and we had a bunch of cameras everywhere and so I was like you can look back on cameras like it was in like these three rooms where it happened and I know they have cameras and the detective said they've already tried looking and they couldn't find the paper we had written and they couldn't, they didn't have the footage from that far back, but it was only like three, three years. Um, so um, we still, we got a lawyer um, and like a child rape activist kind of thing. Like they have like a whole system for that, for like kids, they have their own like advocate I think I said activist, <laughs> um, but we got a lawyer and talked to them. And then my friend had come to me and said, like, I don't think I can testify in front of him. Like, I don't think I can face him again. So we just stopped talking to the lawyers. And I don't know if anything had come of it because we never testified in court. Um, but he did um, get punishment through the school, at least. He, at first, was um, sent to teach special ed gym, which really pissed me off. Yeah, how is that a solution? That sounds That's I went to the bad. school and said, like, half of our special ed kids are nonverbal, so they can't speak out against anything happening. Mm -hmm. And... um. So he ended up hitting one and um, was forced to resign. And I think that happened a year after I graduated. So he never he was still in the school all four years of me being there. Um, but he ended up resigning after he hit the child. Jeez, this guy's a real piece of shit. Yeah, he he's a scum, he's a scummy guy. So that was that was the only point. So what did they did the school know about that there was an investigation because I feel like he's not still working there, is he? No, he he had yeah. to resign. Um and he was older, so I don't think he would be working in another school, but he doesn't have to like stay any distance away from kids. Um like he could have grandkids. Um I know he has a child, so like he could have grandkids and be around them. Um, and what was I going to say? <laughs> um, 
But yeah, the school knew there was an investigation because the detectives had come and asked for our, um, like my friend had mentioned, we wrote police statements and they were like, well, there's none at the office. Like there's none on file. Um, so they went to see if it was an incident report and there wasn't even like, there's nothing on file and they couldn't find any, um, video evidence or anything. Jeez. So because he hit a kid, he was forced to resign. But, you know, truly, there was no real justice served for what he did to you and probably countless other students. And yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, you said like grandkids before, and it just immediately made me think of uh, an episode that we did last season titled My Grandpa Made Me a Sex Slave, which it, it just sounds so extreme, but it's similar to what we're talking about now and it you know you you hear an episode like that and you just think like who is this person who is this grandpa what type of person is this what do they do in their normal life that they're able to do something you know to sexually abuse their own grandchild and it, it's like the answer might be this like this type of person this person that abused their power at their job at a school that never truly got reprimanded for it that is just like you said able to just live life normally not as a sex offender or anything just you know out there with no justice served for you know what they did and their tendon perverted tendencies whether they're a pedophile like whatever they are and man that's that's scary to think how many other people could have been affected uh, you know, during and, and after and even outside of the school setting. And uh, sorry, I'm just like getting angry thinking about it. But, you know, what I guess then, like, what was that kind of trauma and, and after effect for you? Because, you know, I'm getting angry. I could imagine you were very angry or disheartened because nothing came of it. And, and you did ultimately try and you did put yourself out there to tell people other authority figures and adults but then nothing came out of it do you remember at that time just kind of what what was going through your head and and what you were feeling you know knowing that i guess in a sense there maybe wasn't immediate closure with him or, or like i said justice served yeah i was a again like i was a good student but i was a i was such an angry kid like i was just so mad at everything um after that and I was um I kind of resented my mom too because at the beginning like I kind of mentioned like oh he made this weird joke about how big his dick is like it was just off and she was like oh he's probably just like weird like he's like that creepy uncle and so I really resented her for a while for not like taking it more seriously and I hated our school like I just I still hate that school <laughs> but like I um started like skipping classes and um would skip school sometimes once I got my license um I still held up my grades but I, any chance I could not be in school I wouldn't go because I would see him still in the hallways um and I had friends that were younger on my tennis team that would say like oh my god he's so creepy like you can see him staring at girls butts and it just really freaked me out like I was so scared every time there were new freshmen coming in that mm. like he'd be doing something to a new group of kids was it like a well-known thing like not just with your group of friends but like everyone in the school all the students would be like yeah that's the creepy guy I never heard anything again like I guess it might have been because I was that was my first year there but at least like I know for a fact there were a couple girls who would say he's creepy and so um I don't know if it was like fully well known but there were other people who found him at least to be just like creepy um but I've wondered that like if the people who say like he's such a creep were also being like molested by him right exactly you, you don't know and you know this i was about to say this happened to me but it, this didn't happen to me but there there was a teacher in my high school 
And to be completely honest, he was my favorite teacher. He was like the cool history teacher, young, fun, relatable. And like so much so that there were jokes towards like the end of high school about, you know, how like some of his friendships and relationships with students like, oh, you know, they're a little close. Or I think someone once said like, oh, I thought I saw him like at the mall on a weekend with one of the students. And, you know, you just pass these things off as jokes or people just kind of speculating. And it turns out that a few years ago he was charged with third degree rape and endangering the welfare of a child, I think it was, because he was basically having a relationship with a 16 year old student. And it's just like so disheartening when someone you once looked up to, you, you realize is capable of that. But, you know, just to go back to to what you just said about, you know, the, the people that are kind of making those jokes or starting those rumors or saying like he might be a little off, you know, those could essentially be cries for help, right? But they're just not able to fully verbalize it because when you are that age, like you said, maybe it's embarrassing and you kind of don't want to fully say it, but maybe you're just going to put it out there as a rumor, see if other people kind of speak up or have anything to say. And it's, uh, you know, it's just so important to listen to when people say those things, even if it's coming off as just something in passing or a joke. Yeah, I've I've definitely I've thought of contacting one of the girls because she talked about him a lot and talked about how much she hated him and how he was so creepy. And I thought of messaging her now and asking, like, this happened to me. Did this happen to you? But I haven't talked to her in a couple of years. I feel like it might be a little odd <laughs> to just message her out of the blue. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I imagine this is, you know, obviously you left the school. You haven't, I assume you haven't seen this guy in a while. Yeah, not since, I don't think I saw him the la- my last, like, year of high school, so it's been a pretty long time. So has this had, you know, what kind of effect does that have on you, like, sort of long term and after that? Like, how do you sort of move on from something like this, like, and did it leave any sort of lasting impressions? Um, it definitely messed with my view of sex in general mm-hmm. and of men, like, um... I, I didn't really date people in high school partially because of that. Like, I just had no trust in men. And um, I started dating my boyfriend. I'm still with him when I was um, at the end of my junior year of high school. But um, it took me a while for uh, like to even like kiss him. It took us like a year of knowing each other and like, going on dates for us to even kiss wow um so it it takes a lot longer for me to trust people um and i i mean i've been in therapy ever since so that's expensive (laughs) too um but like i'm in therapy for other stuff as well but um yeah like it just has caused a lot of trust issues even outside of just dating just in general um trusting authority figures yeah and like adults in general like you know it's just that that abuse like that power dynamic it's just crazy when you're young you just it, it almost feels innate to just trust adults like adults are wise adults will keep you safe which is obviously not the case and as you get older you realize no you know adults are the ones capable of the worst things in this world uh but you know that that's that's good to hear we're big fans of therapy here on the show but you know is this something that you're just still kind of actively I, I guess working through and maybe will be for a while and i'm curious you know have you do you feel like you've been able to take some big steps forward like you mentioned some resentment towards your mom for not taking it seriously like are these things that you're um, kind of in the process of, of working out or maybe have worked out? Yeah, I would say a lot of it has pretty much, um, I figured out how to cope with everything and how to better, like, voice my opinions. Um, and I've gotten really good at practicing how to say no to mm. everything. I just, like, I love saying no now. <laughs> I just say no all the time. Um, and I... I did have a conversation with my mom a year or two ago and I was like, 
I know you didn't like you were in a different generation where like you always respect teachers, but it really hurt that you didn't listen to me. And she had said something to the effect of that she was she didn't want to believe that I was being hurt that way. Um, like it was too much for her to believe that her daughter was being molested um, daily. Um, yeah. So I kind of forgave, like, I just, I have to forgive her, but, um, I also like, I can understand, like, I, I have a niece and a nephew, I have a couple, um, and I couldn't, I don't know how I would handle finding something out about them like that. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough situation because it's one of those things that, you know, a lot of people who aren't immediately involved, they seem to have, you know, big opinions about what you should do in the situation. But the truth is you really never know until you're a part of that situation in some way, whether it's happening to you, or it's happening to someone that you know. Um, you know, it's it's never like any of those people's fault. It's just the one person who's just being a creep. Um, but the way that you handle it is just the way that you handle it. And there's no like timeline on that. And it's, even if it's years after, it's still very much like valid, obviously. So, I mean, it's it's, it's very like it's unfortunate and and you know i think it's good that you had that talk with your mom too i mean just to like kind of get it out there um you know super necessary to, to have that conversation um also you know before we wrap up here is there any sort of advice that you can give anyone who may have gone through or is going through a, a situation that may be similar to this um my biggest thing is to like trust your gut instinct don't try to make excuses for your abuser i don't like even if they're drunk like that doesn't matter um and for like parents um and like adults if you see kids behavior change drastically and you see them take like multiple showers a day you see them sleeping all day assume the worst and hope for the best um because again, I think parents don't want to face that. And sometimes people aren't ready to just come out and say it. Um, but for like victims, just move at your own pace. You don't have to rush everything. The statute of limitations is really long <laughs> for a lot of that stuff. All right. Yeah, no, that's uh, a lot of really insightful practical and you know powerful advice i think that that you just threw in there so um you know we're we're obviously so sorry that this happened to you that that you had to go through this that your friend and you know others who just had to en endure this guy uh you know definitely sorry for that but we also really you know thank you and and it's good to to be able to speak to you and and at least see you at this stage of of being able to you know revisit this time in your life in order to help others in order to you know have that advice that's so valid coming from someone like you you know to to give to others and share with others so we really thank you for that yeah thank you guys for having me yeah of course, of course. have a good one you too bye bye Before we get to our final thoughts, we do have sponsors for today's episode. The first one being Current. Uh, Current is the future of banking. Okay, Current's mobile app and uh, connected debit card help you get ahead by giving you faster access to paychecks, fewer fees, and more flexibility. Uh, it's also great, I think, because Current members are now able to earn 4% um, uh, APY on savings pods, uh, 60x the national average. Okay, regular stuff you're getting less than 1%. This one you're getting 4%. Um, I believe up until six thousand dollars, which is which is great. Um, so definitely go, uh, you know, check out Current. Uh, any member who signs up for Current uh, personal account can start earning APY daily uh, by adding money to their savings pot and enabling the interest feature. Um, there are no fees for this feature or balance minimum requirements to access. So whatever money you want to put in there, that's not like you have to have a certain amount of money in there to start uh, gaining this interest. It's, you know, there's no minimum. So whatever money you put in there, that's what you got. Um, you earn points on every swipe, redeemable for cashback rewards. 
Uh, there's no withdrawal fees over 40,000 in, in network all point ATMs. Um, so yeah, and for a limited time, uh, we're partnering with Current to give away a thousand dollars. Okay, that's right, a thousand dollars. Current is going to give away two hundred fifty dollars to four listeners of our show. All you have to do is download the Current app at current.com/opl. Uh, remember that is current.com slash OPL winners will be awarded at the end of March. So don't wait, download the current app and, uh, be entered to win at current.com slash OPL. No purchase is necessary to win purchase, uh, won't increases, uh, won't increase the chances of your, uh, winning, um, void where prohibited, uh, eligible eligibility restrictions apply. Visit current.com slash OPL for full terms and conditions. Okay. So definitely go check out current could win 250 bucks. All right. Current.com slash OPL. Our next sponsor is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, which means that it helps you change your virtual location so you can forget about restrictions or censorship based upon certain uh, titles, movies, or shows, or whatever. Um, You can use a VPN to change your virtual location so you can have access to those things. Not only that, but it also uh, increases your online privacy, which trust me, you need, and uh, it helps you avoid hackers as well. Um, And that's why Surfshark is the best VPN on the market. Um, If you can't find what you're looking for on Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or any of those things, you can use Surfshark, change your virtual location, and then you can open up the possibilities of things that you are able to watch. Some things are only available in certain countries, and with a VPN, you can change your location and have access to those things. Um, So don't settle for a limited amount of things to watch. Um, Unlock it all with a VPN, Surfshark specifically. You can try it risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, You can get it at surfshark.deals slash OPL. Uh, Enter the promo code OPL for 83% off and three extra months for free. Uh, You heard me right. Three extra months for free, 83% off. That's surfshark.deals slash OPL. You know, this is an interesting topic because I feel like everyone... Maybe not everyone, but a lot of people that I know have always had that one teacher that there were rumors about or that were actually like maybe a little too handsy or made some inappropriate jokes. There's, I feel like there's always that teacher, you know what I mean, that everyone kind of knows. It's like, eh, that guy's a little off or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all that to say, this is definitely something that's happening like every day in lots of schools and a situation that a lot of people have to deal with. So I think that an episode like this is very important um, because, especially because I think that in this situation, you know, I mean, it's a little different than the one that you described where there was like rape and you know, whatever. Uh, This was like a little more just like inappropriate, but like, sort of passive and just like, you know, just very creepy and not okay kind of stuff that, you know, maybe someone would be like, Oh no, that's fine. Or like you could kind of brush under the rug in a, in a way, just report these things I think is, is the, exactly. is the answer here. If you, if you like, you should give great advice. If you're on the fence about it, you have a gut feeling, just report it because mm-hmm. you, then people will hopefully eventually look into that and, and, and solve the problem. You, you have hope that people will kind of fix the problem um, yeah. You know, sometimes they don't, and that's horrible. And you know, but it, because I know because it's, it's not to like minimize it either. But it's like right. that can you know this is all illegal behavior, and and these are minors. But it's like you again, and you also don't know someone that's capable of that inappropriate touching of minor and things like that. Like you don't know what that that can lead to. Like we were saying with her of like what what else has this guy done? What's he capable of? his own grandchildren like to think about that is just disgusting but like but that's the reality we've had so many conversations like this and and we're just barely scratching the surface that you know this is real and this happens and that's why I thought it was so you know powerful for her to talk about that moment with her mom because you it it is easier to to brush it out of your mind especially if you put yourself in the position of you know a parent or this happening to a loved one like you don't want to ever assume or imagine the worst case happening but the reality is if you want to protect the ones that you love you you almost have to imagine the worst case scenario you have to assume and and you have to know that it is possible that every time you're even sending your kid out into the world to a place where you think they're safe with people that you can trust you have to know that that might not be the case and it doesn't mean you know just be scared of everything in life but I think to be 
cautious to be aware and to then look out for the signs and take the things your kids or loved ones or anyone is saying very seriously uh, I just I thought that was really good advice because, man, it just it eats at you the more we hear stories like this of just, you know, what what people are capable of and, and the way that they manipulate and abuse their power. And it's just terrifying. And like you said, this is something that is going on every day. And schools is just one setting and teachers is another. But, you know, it, it could be in so many different settings or so many positions of, of authority or institutions and things like that. And uh, it's it's really sad and scary to think about. Yeah, man. It's it's just one of those things that I feel like is so common and maybe not talked about enough. And I think that's that's the biggest thing, too, is that I think the more that we talk about it, the more that there's awareness, the more that people who are victims in these situations are comfortable speaking up about, you know, to just kind of brush it under the rug or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And I and would maybe hope it that is, wouldn't happen. I don't yeah. even know what, what, the, what the incentive would be for to report this to another teacher and then kind of sweep it under the rug. You know, if someone ever right. said something about that to someone that I knew or a coworker or something like I would 100% have to look into that and be like, what the hell is going on here? Mm-hmm, like, why mm-hmm. would someone just say that out of nowhere? You know, um, yeah, exactly. at least to just cancel it out and, and move on or something, but yeah. to just ignore it and be like, ah, you know, it's kids overreacting or something I think is like, yeah. The Clearly good news that would be is, insane. Yeah, and the good news is, like, hopefully we are moving away. And she mentioned that sort of generational difference with her mom, which I think is understandable. And, you know, I do think with our generation, the younger generation, there is just more incentive for victims to, like, speak up, like, understanding that people will listen. And I'm not talking about cancel culture or, like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about, like, victims of abuse, things like this. Um you know, there is, there has been a change in the culture of more people speaking out, more victims, you know, speaking out, you know, when, when they've actually, you know, been wronged. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully this is something that does decrease over time in, in terms of children or anyone, you know, enduring this type of abuse and not being taken seriously. So yeah, but glad, uh, glad that we had that conversation with her. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, for anyone out there that wants to be a, a guest on our show, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at our email, oplpodcast at gmail.com, or just go to our website, oplshow.com. Yeah, follow us on Instagram at oplpodcast. If you want to get those bonus episodes and help support the show, head over to patreon.com slash show. You get behind-the-scenes episodes. You get follow-ups with guests. You get episodes that will never appear on this main channel. So check that out at patreon.com slash show. And lastly, you guys have been supporting uh, mine and Joe's card game. We made a party game, trivia game. It's called Pay the Price. You've probably heard about it by now. And uh, we want to make sure that if you haven't gotten it yet, you can get a discount. So head over to paythepricegame.com to check it out and uh, use the code OPL at checkout if you decide to buy it and you'll get 15% off. That is all. That is all. See you guys next time.